thousands of people are killed each year by guns. In order to help determine the presence of gunshot residue, better known as GSR, forensic laboratories perform a variety of tests. One test is the lead test, which confirms the presence of lead. The next test is a nitrate test, which confirms the presence of nitrates and can also aid in determining the distance at which a gun was fired from the victim. The following is an in-depth demonstration of how to use these tests. In order to keep evidence admissible in a court of law, chain of custody and evidence request forms must be filled out properly. Anytime evidence changes hands, a signature is required. The first step in performing both tests is to weigh out the reagents needed accurately. In order to do this, an analytical scale is used and each reagent is weighed into a flask. To begin the nitrate test, a piece of photographic paper is placed in a shallow pan and sprayed with sodium based sulfate on both sides, saturating the paper. Excess theosulfate is then washed off in a water bath. The photographic paper is then dried using a heat gun. Next, equal parts of one naphthol and sulfonylic acid are mixed in a shallow pan. photographic paper is unsaturated with the mixture. After the paper is completely saturated, it is air dried and stored in a dry place until used. To make sure the paper works, a q-tip is soaked in sodium nitrate and dried. It is then dipped into acetic acid and touched to the center of the paper. A pink color confirms the paper works. The evidence is now ready to be processed. The seal is broken and the evidence is removed carefully. The shirt is placed GSR side down on the prepared photographic paper. A cheesecloth is soaked in acetic acid, wrung out, and placed on top of the evidence. It is then ironed until dry. The cheesecloth is peeled off and discarded. The bullet holes marked, and then the t-shirt is peeled off the paper. Any traces of GSR will remain on the paper with a pinkish color. To begin the lead test, sodium rhodizinate is sprayed on four known samples, calcium, lead, barium, and strontium. The presence of a pink color indicates any of the metal ions are present. To confirm the presence of lead, concentrated HCl is sprayed on the samples. A purple color indicates the presence of lead. A lead test can be performed directly on the evidence. This purple color indicates the presence of lead, which comes from unburnt gunpowder and primer residue. Once the analysis is complete, the evidence is repackaged and sealed with evidence tape. This will prevent tampering with the evidence once it leaves the laboratory. To complete the chain of custody forms, the evidence is signed back over to the investigating officer along with any results. These results can help determine who fired the gun and possibly where the person was when the gun was fired. Gunshot residue evidence is very important to investigating officers and these two tests, the lead test and the nitrate test, are common procedures in any forensic laboratory.